In this video, we'll show you the basics of creating users in Burp Suite Enterprise Edition and show you how to set up role-based access control. If you select Team from the top navigation menu, you can see a list of all the users, groups, and roles that have already been configured. A user can be a person who needs to log into the web interface, or you can create API users that other machines or applications can use to interact with Burp Suite Enterprise Edition. As you can see here, I've got one for my Jenkins integration, for example. We'll look at API users and integrating with CICD in a separate video. A role is just a collection of actions that you're allowed to perform. There are several built-in roles that you start out with, so if we look at the scan initiator role, for example, this has access to view scans, sites, issue details, and edit the schedule of a scan, and so on. A group is essentially just a mapping of users to roles. So as you can see here, there's a built-in group that corresponds to each of the roles we just saw. Each of these groups has that role assigned to it, as well as a few users. As user management in Burp Suite Enterprise Edition is based on the role-based access control model, you don't assign permissions directly to individual users. Instead, you create roles that represent different types of user and then assign those to a group. Users then inherit all of the permissions from whichever groups they belong to. This is a lot simpler than it sounds once you see it in practice, so let's walk through an example together. First of all, I'm going to create a new role and call it Scan Reviewer. Now I just need to select all of the things that I want people with this role to be able to do. As you can see, these permissions are grouped based on the objects that the actions relate to, like sites or scans, for example. You might not be able to see this in the video very well, but if you look closely, you can see that some of these permissions are greyed out. This is because they're dependent on another permission being granted first. So, for example, most of the scan-related permissions are greyed out here, because obviously it doesn't make much sense to be able to delete scans unless you can view them in the first place. So once we select the view scans role, some of these other scan related permissions will become available. You might find it easier to select all of the permissions in a folder and then just deselect the ones you don't want. I'll quickly just set the rest of the permissions that I want for this role. When you're done, just click save and you can see that the new role now appears alongside the built-in ones. So next I'll create a corresponding group. and we'll call it Scan Reviewers US. I'll show you why in a second. Now we can assign the role that we just created to this group. Note that you can actually assign multiple different roles to a group, but we don't need to do that for this example. And now I'll just assign some of the existing users to this group. Finally, you can apply site restrictions for a group. So, by default, the members of a group will be able to perform all of their permitted actions on all of the sites that you have configured. So, you can choose to limit them so that they're only allowed to interact with specific sites. Just like with the permissions, you can select these individually or just select the entire folder and exclude specific sites if that's easier. For this example, I'll let members of this group work with all US-based sites only. And now we're done, so I can go ahead and save the group. So we've already added some existing users to this group, but let's create a new one as well. As you've probably already guessed, you can do this by going to the Users tab and then just clicking New User. Or alternatively, you can hover over the Team menu here and just select Add a new user. You'll then be asked to enter some basic user details. If this is just a normal user that needs to log into the Burp Suite Enterprise Edition web interface, just leave the login type set to password. If you were creating an API user, you'd select API key here, obviously, but we'll save that for another time. Then just assign them to any relevant groups. When you go to save, you'll be prompted to copy a password generation link and send this to the user so that they can set up their initial password. If your admin user happens to have also configured a connection to an SMTP server already, then the user will also receive an email containing this link. 
Finally, I just want to point out that Burp Suite Enterprise Edition also supports single sign-on using LDAP or SAML, but we'll cover this in more detail in a separate video. So that's how to get started with user management and role-based access control in Burp Suite Enterprise Edition.